There are small victories, there are losses, there are tragedies, and there is liberation. The Helldivers 2 community has claimed victory, dealt with loss, and pushed past tragedy to fight for a better future. What they haven't experienced before is false hope. Framed in the lens of total victory, celebrations across the galaxy erupted as we thought that we'd exterminated the automaton menace once and for all. This was not the case. Arrowhead had a trick up their sleeve yet again, as the automatons are back with a vengeance. We need all hands on deck, divers. Welcome to what the automatons had planned all along, baiting the entire Helldivers community. If you like these videos, like and sub. It all began on February 8th of 2024, when the General's orders were to take on deadly hordes of socialist scum named the Automatons. They had Raiders, Troopers, Marauders, and Striders. But as you ramped up difficulty and took more territory, they became stronger. Brawlers with chainsaws, devastators of all types like rocket and machine gun wearers, then tanks and hulks. They were reproducing in factories, they were dropping from ships, and as you know by now, they wouldn't let go of what was ours in Malevolon Creek. Major orders started to pick up, and even more chaos was spread by Pillistead. All Helldivers are ordered to make an all-out push to completely destroy the Automaton Legion. Despite the enemy's losses, Automaton messages still include references to the Reclamation. They must be annihilated before this plan can be carried out. But the community rallied together and poured every last drop of sweat and blood into finally vanquishing the bots once and for all. For a brief time, it really seemed like they'd done it. The automaton presence across the galaxy had been completely wiped out. In regards to their total eradication, fellow soldier Obsidian Black on Reddit showed us a piece titled The Last Automaton. And another soldier, Plasma Dude, had this to say. Let him live. Let him live so he may be an example, a warning to all who would oppose liberty. Let him live so he may die alone. Quickly, propagate. <clears throat> Quickly, great artwork of valiant Helldivers made waves, and the troops were holding on to hope. Not only was the fight ongoing, it was progressing. Planets like Dropnir, Dien Quan, and Mantis were falling. But I don't think the idea of outright winning a war was seen as possible. Not even close with Joel the formidable game master puppeting the sheer amount of enemies and what was really going on with our story. In all honesty, we should have seen this coming. The reclamation had been teased for weeks both in-game by major orders and bots themselves, and on social media and getting rid of automatons forever just seemed too good to be true. Even before the tragic events of the past 24 hours, the news of a massive automaton buildup had been leaked. Intel posted by fellow soldier Digital Hazard on the Helldiver subreddit over a week ago intimately suggested that there was one last planet in the automaton's grubby sights, the icy and very chilling planet that is Cyberstan. In a pre-recorded news report hosted by Super Earth's very own Coretta Kelly, she describes an attack on automatons on a scale never seen before in our previous battles against them, with no clear connection to their friends on the previous planets and how they succeeded in the retaking of Cyberstan and the surrounding, weakly defended systems. For further context about what we are dealing with, Cyberstan is the previous homeworld of the cyborgs from Helldivers 1, donning the exact same emblem as the automatons. In a well-earned, long-fought victory against them, Super Earth proved victorious and believed that they had been wiped from the radar forever. But saying they are truly gone would be foolish, as it has been heavily implied their remnants, or dare I say, their second coming, has already made its debut in the form of automatons. Who knows what more the Automaton or Cyborg Collective could be scheming against Super Earth. I mean, they literally took four planets in the span of mere hours. On April 9th, 2024, the community officially found a massive automaton fleet, assembled in secret, had jumped in our galaxy, and begun assaulting Cyberstan as well as its surrounding systems. Preceding this unexpected turn of events, Super Earth had swiftly put out a defense major order, stating that, quote, 
the automatons have been revealed their true force. A massive invasion fleet sweeping through our territory. Defenses are scrambling. Slow its advances as much as possible. We had always known the bots were up to something, but now we are right in the middle of it. It turns out that the automaton forces we'd been fighting against were basically just scouting parties. That's right, the actual brunt of their forces had been sneaking around in the outer rim, just waiting for their moment. It's gotta be said that the way in which Arrowhead have done this has been really refreshing. Typically when I think of massive, gameplay-altering live service events going down, my brain shifts to what I know, and that's Destiny, and what Bungie has done in the past. Some of these live service events hit really hard, like the puzzle Niobe Labs and Corridors of Time. These are the chase to add more loot to activities. But, and I mean this with no disrespect, they both have played the landing very safe. Little things that can ruin an otherwise great story. Niobe Labs had great puzzles, but it was spoiled because they simply had gotten soft and opened it up early to not upset people who wanted their loot before the player base solved the puzzle. Corridors of Time ended with a piece of loot that we already knew was coming. And Bungie removed the puzzle after a couple of weeks, killing all of the merit and respect that the community had fostered together. More recent events in the game that are tied to a similar major order all feel predictable and impossible to fail. Inflated numbers, three-way ties in Guardian games, that sort of thing. The final nail is that most of these updates to the live service side only happen on Tuesdays, so we don't see the outcomes of our labor until the game updates on a schedule. I personally found that it took me out of the live service ever-evolving world of Destiny, the story evolving with the player. I tell you all of this to say that Helldivers 2 and the execution of live service never ceases to amaze me. This is the community telling the story, and Helldivers all around the world work together to take the western side of the galactic war map. For a while, it really seemed like we'd succeeded, and that the automatons had been totally eliminated. However, this was Arrowhead's plan all along. The reclamation had been hinted at for quite some time, so they knew that we could come together and wipe the automatons off the map for good. It's not like they just invented some nonsense reason which could explain why the bots were back. This war is continuing in exactly the way that Joel and Arrowhead have wanted it to. Community. It's the key to this channel just as it is the game. When you are telling the story, it's just the coolest thing to be a part of. And it's one of the reasons why I wanted to make YouTube videos. So, I want to do something cool for you guys who have supported my content for so long and are always just rocking here. For that friend that can't buy the game and also wants something to make gaming a little more refreshing and healthy. Helldivers, there is only one stratagem that helped in the war more than the orbital laser. And that is the secret one. Up, 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 up. That will bring down gamer sex. Dudes, you know I've been with Gamersub since 2019, and you know I'm getting a shaker soon for all of the support you guys have shown. I can't stress how good the flavors are and the new ones are just getting better and better, while having caffeine and caffeine-free options. I drink Gamersubs every day, and the people I've met there and the vision they have for their creators is just even better than the flavors. They are great people. Use code EVAN and I will enter you in for a copy of Helldivers 2. I'll pick 5 winners in the next 48 hours that use my code on anything. If you're not sure that you want to spend some money, just pick up some samples, as they're free, down to the shipping, and tax covered. Just use code EVAN and thank you for using Gamersubs to win the war on the Western Front. It means a lot, guys. Major orders were in, and by April, there were even new enemies to fight on the socialist scum side. We know bugs don't fly, but gunships? Oh, they fly. And they even have special factories for reproduction. Don't ask me how mom and dad gunship make baby gunship. It just happens, okay? There was also what I personally call big motherf- or a walker. Both were menacing, as was the new sandstorm that made it so neither you or the scum could see each other through the hazy walls of oil and blood. This coinciding with the major order to secure Malevolon Creek once and for all just added to the immense weight of the story. The creek was the impossible battle, the tragedy that will live forever. 
But in just five hours after the order was given, everyone became a creek crawler, and it was ours. I was there. I was there when we took back the creek for our fallen brothers, for democracy. I am proud of you all. After indescribable amounts of Super Earth blood was spilled, Arrowhead acknowledged this as the community's biggest victory yet, and Shadow dropped a cape for all of the brave soldiers that secured the creek, free of charge. But there was one last step, one last major order that was given out to liberate the planets being held in the final sectors. Maya, Tibet, Eubania, and the uphill battle was pushed all the way there to take space once and for all. But God damn it, Helldivers, you amaze me every day. Helldivers took the entire Western Front, and the day is memorialized by all as Automaton Dissembly Day. Psst. Follow my Twitter to stay in the loop on everything Helldivers related. I'll be keeping you updated there. April 7th, 2024 was meant to be the day of joy. We had finally taken out the bots for good, but as it turned out, the war reignited just two days later. As I said before, it's all hands on deck now, divers. The enemy could be anywhere, and one thing's for sure, nowhere is safe until we push them back again. You need to be on your guard, your microwave, your oven, hell, even you. Yes, you Helldivers sitting on the toilet watching this might need to eviscerate your phone in the name of squashing automaton scum. Unless you're watching our broadcast, we need the ratings. The return of the automatons also raises some important questions that need to be answered. Some are arguing that the fleet was built in the outer rim, hidden from Super Earth sensors. What if, though, it was built in an entirely different galaxy? If that's the case, and that's possible for our enemies to travel between galaxies, what else is lurking out in the dark? Does this mean that the Illuminate threat will be hitting us when we're already weak from the Cyborg Menace? Only time will tell, and I want to thank you all for listening to another broadcast. The Helldivers community never ceases to amaze me. More power to live service and Arrowhead, and you. Yes, you. Love you guys. Evan, signing out. Mmm.